Hello and welcome to a brand new series. I say brand new, I've tried to do this once before, but we're going to redo it again. Um, so a couple of people have been leaving comments on my Buck Your Hair videos about uh, the comics I've got. Because in the UK, uh, we got 20 issues of Buck Your Hair, but in the States, only 5 issues were ever released. I'm not sure about other countries. Uh, so a couple of people have seen my full Buck Your Hair collection and they have asked me would I do a bit of a, well, a read-through, a bit of a synopsis, let's go through the comics that they missed. Uh, so, yeah, why not? I started this before and I didn't continue because there wasn't many views. But if one person out there just, I guess, benefit from it and I do enjoy uh, going for these comics because, you know, Buck Your Hair is my all-time favourite franchise... Um, that is absolutely fine with me. So we're going to do about 20 odd videos. I'll just focus on one uh, comic at a time. And yeah, we'll just see how it goes. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. But first, I want to show you this um, Back Your Hair comic. This is issue 4. This is the US one. And people always say that everything's bigger in America. But uh, I beg to differ. This is uh, the British comic of Bucky O'Hare, issue one. And that is the American one. Although I will say the American one is in fine condition. So guys, let's get to it. Okay, so here we have issue one of Bucky O'Hare. Probably a different cover to what you had in the United States. And this was released the week between March 20th to April 2nd, 1992. And it was released every fortnight. Um, and I absolutely loved this series, as you well know. So issue number one, price 75 pence. And it came with a free Swiggles Matlow refresher bar. I never like refreshers. So on the cover then, we've got Bucky O'Hare and First Class Android Blinky. Uh, or Android First Class, as it calls him. Uh, standing on some kind of planet. Then we've got a flag in the background, which is, which is actually the design of Bucky's uh, cape. Maybe that is Bucky's cape hanging up there. No, he's got his cape on, actually, but yeah. So that's a flag of uh, Bucky O'Hare, shall we say. And in this issue, we got 25 Super Bucky O'Hare prizes to be won. So you page 16 inside. So, uh, this is where the refresher bar used to be. Uh, obviously it was cell taped down so this is ripped but it is better uh, quality than some I've seen on eBay there is a nice issue one on eBay like pretty I would say it's definitely not mint very good quality better than this but it's £40 I'm not quite ready to spend £45 on a issue yet you guys my lovely hand okay so in the first page we have meet the gallant crew of the space frigate righteous indignation space stands for sentient protoplasm against colonial encroachment and uh try saying that when you're drunk this gives us some information on the characters captain bucky o'hare of course his home planet was enslaved by the toads got deadly duck you form a space pirate bruiser the beelgician berserker baboon AFC, Android First Class Blinky, Jenny the Cat with her mystic powers. I think she tries to hide them from uh, the rest of the crew, actually. Or some kind of secret uh, cultist thing there. And the boy who joined them, Winnie Dewitt from San Francisco. And there is the Righteous Indignation. So on the next page then, we've got some information about the bad guys. And it tells you how the Toads were a nice, harmless race until they created a computer system that was too powerful and decided to enslave them and take over the Anniverse. The Anniverse is what um, basically our universe is called, but in the book you'll hear, uh, universe is called the Anniverse. So it's basically like Skynet, uh, Toads are led by Toad Air Marshal, vain, ugly and not very bright, and pleasant is a polite word for this lead of the Toad Troops. Then we've got our Storm Troad Toads there then. Um, there's a lot of references between Star Wars and Bucky O'Hare, by the way. So we like Stormtoads, Stormtroopers. You'll see more as we come along. Right, so the first five issues, I think, in the UK are exactly the same as what the US had. It's just about, um, well, it follows a graphic novel. And it starts with the Toads pursuing our heroes in space. And I was reading some of this, and a lot of it is kind of difficult for maybe a kid to understand 
You have your phone orders. Let's see what happens when you pop some plasma on them. Uh, that's mammal built, all right. Well, these aren't too bad, but it was some dialogue in here. I thought, like, why should why should he when all we're doing is tickling his galvanometer? Let's go to max voltage and singe your hairy tails off. So here we got an angry looking dead eye. Bucky over here and Jenny in the cockpit right here. Uh, this is quite similar to the first episode of the cartoon series as well. It does differ. So it's basically trying to escape from the toads. Uh, but they can't because the photon accelerator, this thing, is not working. It's malfunctioning. This character is not Bruiser. It's Bruiser's brother Bruce. So they're trying to fix the proton accelerator to get away from the toads. But unfortunately, the righteous indignation takes a hit. And spoiler alert, poor Bruce is uh, annihilated. But it wasn't the shot, it was a shot causing like um, the floating accelerator to fire all his power back. And pretty much destroyed him. What's different about this though in the cartoon is it simply zaps Bruce into a different universe because they thought it might be a bit uh, harsh cutting off a character in the kids' cartoon. So yeah. Then we have a colouring competition. Prizes to be won. Three star winners get a toad croaker. I've got that. Plus Captain Bucky here and Deadeye. Wow, it must have been cool to win that back in the day. Try to run us up or win one of the super characters from the Bucky O'Hare range. That'll be quite cool. So, and here is the page to colour. And the form to send off then to Bucky O'Hare Colouring Competition, PO Box 305, London, NW11TX. Closing date, April 10th, 1992. The editor's decision is final. Woohoo! I wonder if they did actually look at all the entries or they just picked a random one. Who knows, eh? And then we got the Toads again, continuing the attack. But here the size go down to a closer look. Saying to Deadeye that, uh, remind me to put you in for the Space Gunnery and Loudmouth Medal. Yeah, Dead Eye Duck does have a mouth on him for sure. I like this bit as well. Is it as bad as I think it is, Blinky? Bruce is very dead, sir. No, I mean our situation. <laughs> Class. There isn't so much uh, remorse there for Bruce, though. Okay, then we get our first shot of San Francisco. Bucky and Blinky are attempting to fix the photon accelerator. And we get introduced to, well, first of all, we have Letter. So basically, this is a page just saying to all uh, kids out there, help me in my fight against uh, Complex and the Toads, and send in any letters you can think of, and star letters and drawings will probably get a prize. And that was the Hair Mail, Bucky Your Hair Comic, DC Thompson and Co. Wow. What would happen now if you tried to uh, send something here? Return the sender, no doubt. Yeah, and then this is uh, Winnie DeWitt, the science geek, loves his science experiments, is not interested in much more than just working on science. Uh, this is his bedroom, normal kid's bedroom, it's kind of uh, spaceship there. Oh, is that his water pistol? By here. That's, that's very uh, iconic. If you remember the cartoon, you know why. Yeah. So then, Jenny is basically saying, right, the situation is getting serious. The photon accelerator is not completely fixed, but they got to try it. So that's uh, Bucky's photon accelerator. Oh, and Willie's science fair project also happens to be a photon accelerator. And they press it at the same time. So there's a big event in the cartoon and the comic, because then suddenly... Next issue, 
great mother of rabbits. It's some giant pink half-shaved mad bazooka baboon. Watch out, Bucky. It's got a lightsaber. There you go. Another Star Wars reference. So that is pretty cool. I love how uh, the Star Wars references in this. But really do it. Boy genius must make a choice. Help to save this CD section of space or finish his science project. Then you got some fun, uh, fun page for kids here to do. Blinky's brain bafflers. Complete the picture of Blinky. The lines of the grid should help to copy. Should help you to co to copy the half already drawn. I still don't be that good at that now, to be honest. And then by following the trails, kind of really Bucky and Dead Eye duck to their own belongings at the other end. So down there, they've got Bucky's uh, goggles, Dead Eye's hat, and Willie's glasses. Oh, and you've got a crossword. I'll try not to get the answers in. First name of human boy is Willie. Type of spaceship flown by space fighters, that's Frigate. Surname of space captain, that's He. Or is it Oh He? Yeah, I think that's Oh He then. X four photon accelerator. Five name of SPAC cat, Jenny. Six evil outer space baddies, Toads. First name of space captain, Bucky. Bruce the Beardjuice in Berserker Baboon. The Righteous Indignation. There you go, it's quite easy. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, I think we're correct on those. And then the back of the cover is a collector crew. So the back of every issue had a comic book character. This is Bucky over here, Captain Space Frigate Righteous Alienation. And it says, build up your own SPAC crew roll poster by cutting out and keeping our bright pin up. Look out for First Mate Jenny in two weeks' time. And I've said this a thousand times in my videos, but that is... Um, the picture my parents took to get printed on one of my birthday cakes once so that has a lot of nostalgia for me that right guys thank you for watching that has been issue one of captain bucky o'hare uh and there's another 19 to go All right so i'll catch you in the next one